It got heated. They traded insults, called each other liars. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis got downright nasty when they went head-to-head -head at Drake University in Iowa in a one-on-one -on -one debate days before the Iowa caucuses. Joining me on the morning show news for Jack's political analyst and head of the Jacksonville University Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. Rick, good morning. Good to have you back here. Good morning, Bruce. So it got personal. I, I would even call it verbal combat. Bruce, it really was. And from the opening bell, that's exactly what it was. It was less on policy and more personal. For Governor DeSantis, he said that Nikki Haley was a mealy-mouthed politician and that she was owned by her donors and Wall Street elites. For Nikki Haley, she said he was a liar, that he had blown through $150 million for his campaign and had nothing to show for it, that he had supporters that were anti-Semitic. This was not about public policy. It was personal. Bruce, I thought it diminished both. I think it elevated Donald Trump, and it shows the advantage of Donald Trump not participating, this going after each other, which happened throughout the debate. And Donald Trump knew that because he spoke at a separate forum that was hosted by Fox News. And at times I thought, you know, the two decided the winner was whoever spoke the most words, and you almost couldn't decipher what they were saying. That said, the biggest takeaways from last night. Well, several big takeaways. from First, there was a willingness for both of them to take Donald Trump and contrast him with policy. Um, on the border wall, for example, they both agreed that Donald Trump said he was going to build the wall, but he did not. They, they, on national debt, they both said he added $8 trillion to the national debt. Um, on China, they said he didn't go far enough. But neither one of them was willing to go to that extra step of Chris Christie to say he was unfit to hold office. But if you want the big picture and the big takeaways from last night, you have Ron DeSantis talking to a socially conservative Iowa base. You have Nikki Haley, who's got her eye on New Hampshire and a national audience. And it was very difficult in that debate because Iowa and New Hampshire are fundamentally different. It was a debate I thought diminished by the back and forth, the personal attacks, less about policy. In the end, that may have been an advantage Donald Trump. But on policy, they did clash on immigration. They clashed on several areas. They clashed on Ukraine, for example. They clashed on Social Security. On immigration, I thought it was more about personalities than policy. This is a base issue, and each one of them wanted to be the toughest on immigration. Uh, for Governor DeSantis, he said, I'd have an emergency on day one, a national emergency. I'd use the military to go after the cartels. He tried to attack Nikki Haley and said she was against a border wall. She said this is an ex another example of a lie. Many times in the debate, she said, go to DeSantisLies.com. She said that a dozen times. And she said what she actually said was, a wall is not enough. She touted the toughest immigration laws in the country in South Carolina. She said she did E-Verify before Governor DeSantis. This was a base issue, but demonstrated one of the challenges in the debate. No real big policy differences, but differences in style and a lot of personal attacks. Demonstrative differences on foreign policy, though, especially Ukraine. Clearly so, Bruce. The discussion of Ukraine reflects a fracture in the Republican Party on Ukraine and foreign policy. It reflects a growing divide in the country. For Governor DeSantis, more of a part of that Donald Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy, a little bit more of that growing isolationist wing. And I thought he did a good job of articulating why you can't have a, black check, a blank check to Ukraine. But he started out slow in this, um, not in the debate necessarily, but on this issue when he talked about this being a territorial dispute in Ukraine. Nikki Haley, former UN ambassador, plays to his strength on foreign policy, demonstrated a great command of the facts, and articulated very well that this isn't simply about that spending, that this is about Putin, that you believe, should believe what he says, it's Ukraine now, it's Poland next, it's the Baltic states. She articulated this is in the national interest, not about Ukraine's interest. It demonstrated a very big clash. Once again, Donald, um, Ron DeSantis playing more to the base, Nikki Haley more of a New Hampshire and national audience. Now, they, they did take on Donald Trump on certain issues, like not fulfilling promises for, from four years ago, but they tiptoed around that holy grail, uh, you know, insurrection and, and January 6th. They're still not really going after him. They're really not, but I did think in last, night de last night's debate, Nikki Haley went further than she has in the past when she contrasted herself with Donald Trump on January 6th. Donald Trump called it a beautiful day. She said it was not a beautiful day, it was a dark day. She said that Joe Biden won the, uh, won the election that Donald Trump lost. She said that Donald Trump will have to be held to account for January 6th. That was, a, that was going further than many have. Again, that's that national audience, that's new, the New Hampshire audience. For Governor DeSantis, he stressed more the legal problems of Donald Trump and why that's problematic for him as a candidate. But so far, neither go, willing to go as far as Chris Christie to say that Donald Trump is unfit to hold office. You saw a contrast in styles, but not a lot of contrast on substantive policy, except what you've outlined, Ukraine, Social Security, some on abortion. So if you were keeping score, DeSantis got more cheers. He plays well to a conservative caucus audience. Um, 
he, some say, has to win Iowa to stay in the race. Who had the edge last night? You know, Bruce, for Governor DeSantis, he has really found his footing since what I'd say the Newsom debate. The first three debates he did okay, but I thought he really improved in Newsom. He did well in the fourth debate. He's more comfortable. I would give Governor DeSantis the edge when it comes to that more socially conservative, conservative Iowa voter. Nikki Haley, on the other hand, is a very strong debater. And she was again last night, although she was very flustered at times. And I would give her an edge to that New Hampshire, uh, that New Hampshire audience and the national audience. She closed by saying that in a head-to-head -head contest with Joe Biden, she's up by 17 points and that Ron DeSantis is dead even. That is part of her strength is that national appeal, that New Hampshire appeal. They were both, although on the same stage, talking somewhat to different audiences, they both performed well. In the end, it may have been Donald Trump who was the big victor because strategically he stayed away and strategically he has continued to rise in the polls in Iowa. And I think it was Nikki Haley who said, look, you have to have different personalities. The caucus in New Hampshire plays to a different personality when it comes to the voter than the personalities of the people who go to the primaries in New Hampshire. Very, very different. The caucus approach of Iowa may be an advantage for Ron DeSantis because he's got the ground game and he's been there for a while. New Hampshire, which allows independents and others to vote, is an advantage for Nikki Haley. Two different audiences, same candidates. We're gonna, but Monday will be really, really important. Ron DeSantis will outperform. He hopes to outperform expectations. Nikki Haley hopes to be in the game. Her eyes on New Hampshire. And you and I will be talking about that in the very near future. Rick, as always, thank you.